Today we're going to demonstrate how to simulate voltage driven AC coils using features that we call coils and windings. I'm showing a 3D picture of a coil here where I've made sections of the coil invisible and you can see it's a multi-layer coil. There are five layers, three layers with 27 turns and two layers with 26 turns. And the reason we're going to simulate this coil is that several prototypes have been wound and tested and we have excellent confirmation between test results and our simulation. Now we're going to model this in our Orsted program. Orsted is a 2D and rotationally symmetric model. So we're going to model this helical coil, we're going to approximate it with a rotational symmetric model. So what that means is uh, we have the 133 circles which represent the turns and this is not an exact representation of a helical coil. A rotationally symmetric model you have to imagine the circles being revolved around the axis of rotation. I've shown that with a segment here. This is the Y axis and as a result this would be a series of concentric rings. So that's not exactly a helical coil but it turns out to be an excellent approximation and what we will do we'll group these together into what we call an eddy current winding and what that will force the program in the simulation to solve the voltage for each of the turns will be added together and summed so that they equal one volt at a phase angle of zero. So we've already assigned materials, we put copper in the circles representing the turns and now I'm going to show you how we're going to define the eddy current winding. So we're going to assign a voltage winding and I'm going to use a box selection so that I can select all the 133 turns in one action. Okay, now the program is asking me what is the voltage. So it's going to be a voltage of one volt at a phase angle of zero. And now it's changed the shading to show that this is defined as an eddy current winding. I've already solved this model and you can see I solved this using the boundary element method. We could also have used the finite element method, but here we're showing the boundary element method where we subdivided all the segments. A self-adaptive solver created a bunch of nodes, and now we can analyze this model. We can look at, for instance, the resistance of the winding. And I'll click on it, and it turns out the resistance is about 0.666 ohms, which is an excellent agreement with actual test data. We can also calculate the inductance of the winding, and the inductance of the winding is about 1.05 millihenry. Again, it's an excellent agreement. Now this model was solved at 60 Hertz. We also constructed a parametric analysis where we have the model solved 31 different times at frequencies ranging from 6 Hz to 6 kilohertz, And you can see they've been spread out in a geometric progression to give us sort of a log scale representation. For each frequency we calculated the current in the winding, the source resistance, the reactance of the winding, and the inductance of the winding. Now this has already been solved and the results are displayed on this graph. You notice the bottom scale, it shows the frequency ranging from 6 Hz to 6 kHz. The yellow circles represent the current. And you can see initially the magnitude of the current is about 1.5 amps. And as the frequency increases, the current drops off. These red squares represent the resistance. And it starts off at about 0.66 ohms as we saw and it stays fairly flat, fairly constant, until you get say around a kilohertz and then the resistance starts to increase which is natural, you'd expect that because of skin effect. Now these gold squares represent the reactance and that increases far faster than the resistance. So the resistance starts off at 0.66 ohms and by the time you reach 6 kilohertz it's only about an ohm only a little more, whereas reactant starts off very small, essentially zero, but by the time you get to six kilohertz it's nearly 40 ohms, which is much greater. And so that's what is predominantly reducing the current in the coil. And finally the blue triangles represent the inductance of the winding, and that really doesn't change with frequency as you'd expect. 
So the advantage of modeling these multi-turn coils with eddy current windings is that you can see the true AC resistance and impedance as a function of frequency. And this is very useful for sensor designers or for people modeling induction coils and induction heating. As I mentioned, the resistance does not really increase until about 1.5 kilohertz. So suppose you're just going to operate this coil at low frequencies. There's no reason truly really to model every turn. You could just say we have an approximation to the resistance. We'll make it a constant resistance. And that simplifies the modeling. We can create a coil region just by drawing a rectangle, which sort of would enclose all the 133 turns. And we can assign that as a coil. And to do that, we go to physics, not eddy current windings now, but coil windings. And we say we're going to assign a coil. The program asks for the resistance of the coil. So let's say that you either measured a prototype or you calculated it geometrically, and you know it's about 0 0.666 ohms. Then it asks for the number of turns. And we're going to say there are 133 turns. And it asks for the polarity of the coil. It could be positive or negative. We'll make it positive. And now it says select the region which represents the coil. So now we've assigned a coil. We still have to assign a voltage winding and we'll make it the same one angle zero that we did before. We'll go physics, coil windings, assign voltage winding, select the coil, assign one angle zero, and now we can solve this and it'll solve very quickly. And if we look at the resistance it's really just the resistance we assign because there's no eddy current calculation being performed. And we can calculate again the inductance. And that's about 1.04 milli Henry's, which is very close to what we had before with the uh, much more complex model. Now we've also done a frequency parametric using this simplified coil. And here again we use the same color scheme. You can see that the current drops off with frequency, the reactance increases with frequency. The resistance now is constant because we've just assigned a constant value and the inductance is constant. So you can see that if you require the exact frequency variation of resistance, then you can use the eddy current winding feature. But if you are operating your coils at low frequency, you can use a more simplified uh, definition, the coil definition, the coil windings. Okay, hopefully this will allow you to apply the proper type of winding to your own simulations.